Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Um, my name is uh, Pedro Chu, and uh, welcome to uh, another Kativa Virtual uh, Academy. Okay, so today uh, we'll be talking about uh, contact analysis uh, in ANSYS. And uh, as I said, my name is uh, Pedro Chu. I'm the uh, simulation practice uh, lead uh, here at uh, Kativ. Um, and just uh, a little bit uh, about myself. Um, I have been doing finite element analysis uh, for over uh, three decades. Um, that here is a, a picture of me. I guess you can see me on, on the video as well, but uh, you know, um, that's, uh, that's me in uh, one of my uh, uh, hiking uh, trails uh, on vacation and uh, still with a beard uh, to, to, to be done. But uh, yeah, I think you're entitled to that when, when, you're, on, uh, uh, when you're having fun uh, out there. Um, my industry experience, uh, I've worked in the aerospace, uh, autom automotive, uh, heavy machinery, uh, the major a o o OEMs, uh, you know, nuclear in industry, consulting, and uh, you know, I, I have lived in many places. Um, three uh, uh, different continents. Uh, I've been born in uh, in, in Taiwan. Uh, you know, raised in Brazil and uh, lived in Canada, and uh, you know, for, in four different living in, in four different countries. So that's just a little bit uh, about myself. So. Uh, for today's uh, agenda, as I said, as I said we we're talking about uh, contact analysis. Uh, so we'll uh, look at uh, you know why uh, contact analysis uh, uh, is important. Um, uh, uh, we will talk about uh, different uh, types of uh, contact uh, in, in, in available in ANSYS. Uh, we'll do a, a, con a contact 101, just a brief introduction to how contact uh, works uh, in ANSYS. Um, by no means this is a, com uh, a this is a comprehensive uh, training. This is just uh, you know tip of the iceberg, just to uh, get you interested and um, um, and uh, and then in the end I'll just uh, do a demo and then show some of the things that I I, I, I have covered in the, in the slide presentation slides that I have here. So here you you can see. Uh, a break uh, uh, yeah, in the system in, in a car where you, you can see a lot of uh, contact. Um, you, you know, you have uh, the pads uh, and, uh, and then you, you can be touching condition and you can be, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, heat generating uh, contact, a lot of things. So this would be a, a typical uh, example of, uh, of contact analysis. And as, as I said, today we'll just, uh, you know, cover some of the uh, basics of, uh, of, uh, of the contact. Um, why, uh, why contact? So we all know contact uh, is basically a boundary condition that uh, you know, would be applied uh, to, to the, the parts and the surfaces and components in my finite element model, okay? Um, when, uh, you know, we uh, do uh, use a contact. We can capture uh, the the proper load path uh, in the in the in the structures, right? So, so this eliminates uh, the guesswork of knowing uh, where the parts will be uh, touching uh, each other. Okay. So, for example, if you look at this uh, this animation here, uh, <clears throat> you can see uh, that. Uh, uh, you know, the, the, the contact could be as, uh, as it is in, in the beginning and, uh, you know, as it uh, uh, load is transferred from this bar to this bar, uh, how it is, where the load is being applied will change as uh, the, 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 the bars move, right? So if we didn't have a, a, a contact uh, implementation for a model like this, you would have to know before the run exactly where the load is being transmitted from this bar to this bar. Okay, so there is a little bit of a guesswork. You would have to, to probably do a, you know, this, man, man, this contact manually. And uh, so that is, that is just, that just not the, the right, right way of, uh, of doing it. 
So that's why also we, we have a contact. And then we know that contact is a, is a changing status of nonlinearity. So when uh, the, the parts are in contact, you will have a certain uh, stiffness associated to, uh, to, to, to the model. And if they are not in contact, the stiffness will be, uh, will be different, okay? So the contact, the uh, type of uh, types of contact available in ANSYS, uh, will have a uh, you know bonded uh, contact where uh, the surfaces that are in contact they will not separate, they will not slide, so they are just bonded uh, to each other. Uh, we also have um, uh, you know a no separation type of contact in which uh, the, the the surface they are allowed to slide in the, 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 the contact surface, but they are not allowed to separate, but they are allowed to, uh, to slide. We have uh, the, the, the more general contact then, which is a frictionless, which means that the, you know, the contact, they will, um, uh, uh, you know, can separate, oops, sorry. The contact can separate, okay? And there's no friction when uh, the, 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 the contact surfaces are moving relatively to each other. Uh, we have uh, you know, a rough contact, which is uh, similar to the frictionless, but uh, you know, there is no sliding allowed. They can separate, but uh, there is no sliding allowed. So they are stuck in, uh, to each other, but they, are, they, they can still separate. And then we have a frictional contact where you can uh, Define a coefficient of friction, and uh, you know the, the, the contact surface will be able allow to separate, to move, uh, you know, relatively to, to, to each, each other, and then the, how they are going to move in the in the uh, the, the surface direction is uh, through uh, friction coefficient. Okay, the mu times the, the normal force uh, dictates you know how much they can. Uh, slide relatively to, the, to each other. So how contact uh, uh, works uh, in ANSYS? Basically, ANSYS will track the position of nodes and elements of those uh, surfaces that are close in close uh, pro proximity. And uh, when contact is, is de detected, uh, the solver will enforce something that we call a contact uh, compatibility. And this contact uh, compatibility prevents the surface from penetrating each other, okay? So the way it works is that, uh, you know, whenever, uh, you know, there is uh, the, 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 the contact surfaces, they come into you know, contact with, with each other. When the solver, uh, detects a penetration. So, you know, the, the, the solver will track the amount of penetration and then will apply a force uh, to bring the, uh, the, the node that is uh, penetrating back to the uh, uh, contact surface, okay? Um, <clears throat> so, uh, uh, these, uh, these, uh, these uh, compatibility then, uh, you know, make sure that, that there is no, no, no penetration. And as you can see here, uh, the, the, the contact, contact implementation in ANSYS, you have a contact surface and then you have a target surface. And we'll talk about this, uh, what, what, are, what is the difference between a contact surface and a target, target uh, surface uh, in the next uh, slides. Okay. So uh, by default, uh, ANSYS will uh, detect the uh, contact on the Gaussian, on the Gauss uh, points, in the integration points. So if you look at uh, the, the surfaces here, you have the nodes, okay? And then you have uh, the, the, the integration points in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the surface, okay? And by default, ANSYS will track uh, the, the contact using these uh, integration points here. So these points in, red, in uh, yellow, are the points that are going to be coming in, in contact with, yeah, with a, let's say, the, the target uh, surface here, okay? You can control how you want, uh, you know, these uh, uh, contact inter interaction to, to occur uh, you, uh, through these uh, detection methods here. And uh, we'll talk about these uh, different uh, detection met methods also today, okay? So 
if you don't want the contact to be happening at the, 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 the integration points, you have an option to choose the nodal uh, method. So if you use a nodal method, then the, 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 the contact will happen at the nodes. Okay? But uh, as you can see, uh, unless you have an edge uh, contact, okay, usually the, the integration points will give you a better um, uh, uh, discretization because you have more points to, to, to be in contact. Uh, so, so in this phase here, for example, uh, you would have, a, uh, if you use nodes, you would have just a, a through or the, the, those two points, but if you use integration points, or if you look at the, all the, in, the entire phase here, here you would have one, two, three, four, five, six uh, 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 nodes, but the integration, in terms of integration points, you have two, four, six, eight, ten. So you have a lot more uh, points that, that potentially could be coming in contact. Okay, but you do have uh, an option to choose how uh, you want uh, uh, the contact to, to be occurring there. Okay, so because there is a, a, the concept of a, a contact and target, there is something that in, in ANSYS in contact that is, is called a symmetric or asymmetric uh, behavior. Okay, so, um, the, uh, the, 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 the contact is not always uh, going to be the nodes from a contact surface, okay? That is going to be contacting the elements on the target surface, okay? And uh, in uh, ANSYS Mechanical, uh, it will uh, differentiate who is contact and who is a uh, uh, target using uh, the red color for contact and using blue color for uh, the target. Okay. So uh, as you can see, uh, when you define a, a, a contact uh, analysis in ANSYS, uh, ANSYS will, uh, will need you to define who is the contact surface and who is the target surface. And then it will be tracking uh, the contact between the points from my contact surface to the surface or the element faces on my target uh, surface. Okay, so have, have, have that, uh, that in mind. Okay. So as I said, there are symmetric and asymmetric behavior. Uh, on the asymmetric behavior, only the contact surface, okay, will be constrained from penetrating the target surface. So you know, other ways, uh, other words, only the points in the contact surface is checking contact against the uh, faces on the target uh, surface, okay? If you define your contact behavior as being symmetric, now what ANSYS will do is that it will look at the, the points in my contact surface against the faces in my target surface, and it will look at the points in my target faces, surfaces, and that uh, against the, uh, the, the, the surfaces on my uh, uh, contact surface. So basically it will be checking points on both sides for, uh, for contact, okay? Internally, what ANSYS is doing is basically it is uh, creating two sets of contacts, okay? But uh, that, uh, that assures that, that you have symmetry. You have uh, both sides will be looking at, at, at each other for, for contact. And then I'll show you an example, uh, you know, during the demo, where that, uh, you know, why uh, that is important. Okay. And then also you have, uh, you know, if you choose an auto asymmetric uh, behavior, uh, ANSYS will automatically determine who is a uh, contact and who is uh, a target and, and define all of that contact. So the way to uh, to control that is uh, in the uh, in the the, 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 the contact uh, definition, in the behavior you you see the different um, uh, options there. By the pro program program control is going to be the auto assignment. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> on the asymmetric uh, behavior. Um, uh, the, 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 the who you define as contact and, and target can have a significant impact on the results that uh, you, you have, okay? So for example, if I choose 
this guy here to be the contact surface and this guy to be the target surface. And I define my uh, contact behavior as asymmetric. As I said, ANSYS is going to look for, let's say, nodes in the contact surface against surface on the target uh, surface. Okay. So you can see that the contact will occur when these nodes touch this face on my target surface. So this is fine. This is exactly what, what, what I want. But if I go and specify these guys as being the contact surface and this guy as a target surface, okay, the contact will happen when the nodes in my contact surface touch the surface, the surface or faces on my target surface. So you can see that there has been a penetration. Okay, so again, when you have the asymmetrical behavior, that is when you have uh, your full control of uh, what, what, what is going on uh, in the contact and interaction. And uh, you know, that's, that's where you know, the, the definition of contact and target surface will become very important. Okay, so ha have that in mind. And, and here, this picture is just, just to show that, you know, if you don't want to use uh, uh, the, the Gaussian points, you can, uh, you know, if you use, a, I mean, if you use a Gaussian points, you, sometimes you may have a contact penetration there because uh, the node is, may not be uh, used for, uh, for, for, for contact detection, okay? But again, when you're using asymmetric uh, behavior, it is important that uh, you, properly define who is a contact surface and who is a target surface, just for the reasons that I already I just highlighted here. Okay. So um, <clears throat> we have some uh, guidelines uh, when you're using uh, asymmetric uh, behavior. Uh, so if you, if you have a convex uh, surface coming into contact with a flat or concave uh, surface, okay, the flat of or concave surface should be the target surface. Again, think of it as being points on my, uh, 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 on my contact surface against surface on my target surface. So when you have a, a, a convex stroke uh, face that will be something like this, coming into contact with a flat face like, like this, it is important that you're using the points on my convex surface so that it can capture properly in the, in the contact there. Okay. If you have a coarse mesh versus a fine mesh, again, you want to use, because a fine mesh has more points, you want the finer mesh to be the contact uh, surface and you want the coarse mesh to be the uh, target uh, surface. That's why you use the target surface as being, the, the coarse mesh is in the target surface. Okay. If you have uh, one surface stiffer than, than the other, okay, you want the stiffer surface to be the target uh, uh, surface, just because the, the, the stiffer surface will, will, will deflect less. And if this guy is coming to contact uh, there, it will be you know, deforming more. So you want to be able to capture you know, the deformation of these, uh, uh, the, 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 the softer uh, surface when it comes in, into contact with my uh, uh, stiffer surface, okay? Um, if you have, a, if you're uh, talking about uh, you know, elements uh, with different uh, formulations, so higher order elements are against uh, lower order elements. Again, you want the lower order to, have, uh, to be the target just because you, know, you have less nodes on the low, lower order elements. Okay. If you have a surface that is uh, larger than, than the other, you want the larger to be uh, the, the target surface as well. Okay just because of the, the, a smaller surface might be sliding along the, 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 the bigger surface, might be rolling over or whatever, you know, boundary conditions you have specified there, uh, you want the, you know, the, the, the smaller surface to be, uh, uh, or the larger surface to be the target uh, surface, okay? So we have talked about uh, this, uh, you know, the, the asymmetric uh, behavior and symmetric behavior. And uh, you know, let's look at the, you know why uh, you know we it, it is important that uh, we highlight the differences and uh, talk about the pros and cons of, of each other, right? Um, the symmetric behavior, obviously, it is uh, easier to uh, to use because you don't have to worry about uh, who is a target, who is a who is a contact. Um, 
but because ANSYS is, uh, is creating uh, symmetric uh, uh, contact or internally is creating actually two uh, contact pairs, it is uh, more uh, computationally expensive. So it's going, going to take a, a, you know, longer to run. And it also all depends on the, on the model that, uh, that you have, okay? Interpreting data can be more difficult also because uh, results, because since you have two contact pairs in there, if you have a, a pressure being applied there, you know, part of the pressure will go to one contact pair and part of the pressure will go to the other contact pair. So then, uh, then interpreting results there can, can be a little, a little tricky, okay? Um, but, uh, you know, as I said, it's uh, easier to, to, uh, to define it. Then you don't have to, to worry about uh, many, many things there. For the asymmetric uh, behavior, um, uh, the, you know, you, you can have ANSYS uh, uh, automatically, automatically uh, determine who is the target, who is a, who is a contact there. Uh, you know, when you do the asymmetric behavior, it's more error prone, okay, because uh, you might introduce a penetration that uh, you didn't really want to introduce. But the re re reviewing results is uh, pretty straightforward because uh, since you have just one contact uh, pair in, in that the contact interaction, if you are concerned about the, you know, contact pressure, if you're uh, talking about, uh, you know, you have a, a glued contact and you want to, to determine, you know, how, you know, if, uh, that glue is going to come off or not, you know, you can just uh, specify uh, output request for the contact pressure there and then just look at the, uh, the amount of pressure or the amount of uh, contact stress that, uh, that you have there and then determine if, uh, you know, the, you know that the glue stress is, uh, is uh, uh, good enough for you or not. Okay, so um, uh, this is what are the slides that I had to present. I forgot to mention it in the beginning. If you have any questions, you know, feel free to uh, you know uh, uh, type in the uh, uh, in the chat. Uh, I will be checking the, uh, uh, the 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 questions uh, later. Okay, that uh, question that that you have. And uh, at this point, let me just uh, jump to uh, to my model here. Okay, so I have uh, just uh, two very simple. Uh, bars that, that I created in a space claim I brought into, into a mechanical. And uh, so these are two different uh, components in a, in, a, in, a, in a space claim. And uh, you notice that the, when a mechanical brought this, uh, this model, it automatically created these uh, connections for me, okay? And if I look at this uh, contact region, it's, it's nice that uh, it uh, already colored who is my, uh, who is my uh, contact and who is my target. So you can see that my target is the, the blue. So here's my target. And uh, here is my uh, contact. So it will be looking for nodes in my contact against surfaces or faces in my uh, target. So you can see that, you know, you know you, it has uh, these uh, two small windows and uh, you can zoom in, zoom out and, and see if uh, the definition of this uh, contact region is, is correct or not. And you can see also that, uh, you know, the type of a contact is, is bonded. So this guy is going to be bonded to this guy, okay? So let's, uh, let's do this. Let me uh, apply some boundary conditions. I'm going to... Select this face here. I'm going to select this face here, apply. Okay. And let's also insert uh, pressure on this face here, apply. And let's uh, put a pressure of, let's say, two megapascals here. Okay. And uh, let's just look at the deformation here. That's the only thing I'm. I, I, I just want, want, want to show you. So let's just go solve, you know, just solve in a, in a few seconds, okay? So you can see here in the, the progress bar, so it's done. I go to the formation and you can see that, you know, I apply the pressure and, the, you know, this is the, 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 uh, the, the form shape, uh, you know, I, uh, and, uh, you know, that, that's pretty much what, what I expected because they are bonded, 
right? So now I can go and just change this from bonded to, let's say, frictionless. And uh, go back here, solve this guy. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> it will solve the problem. Again, you know, this is exactly what I could expect, right? Apply the pressure here. I expect these to, you know, to come, uh, come apart, not to be in contact anymore. And uh, in this case, the contact is just uh, at the edge contact there. Okay. So by doing that, I, I have the proper uh, load uh, transfer that is going from this bar, this bar here. Okay. Uh, if you didn't know, uh, you know, where the contact was, you could have, uh, you know, let, 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 let me just see if I go true scale. So this is a true scale. So, you know, uh, if you didn't have a contact available to you, potentially what you, you could do is that uh, make sure that, uh, you know, uh, you have a node, a line of a uh, row of nodes on the lower bar here, and, and then they somehow connect uh, those uh, those nodes in there. Okay, so that's that'll be a, a manual way of uh, doing uh, contact analysis. Okay, so this is a pretty pretty straightforward. Uh, you go here and you can see, uh, you know, the the, the different types of uh, and the, the contact that I I, I had. Uh, uh, describe to you, you know, the behavior here is, you know, symmetric, asymmetric. Um, you have, uh, um, you know, the detection mode, right, that I talked about on the uh, Gaussian or, or nodes, right? So I, I'm not going to, to uh, play with any of those in, in this model. And um, let me bring another model that I had prepared for today, where uh, this will be a little bit more obvious, uh, the penetration that, that, that we see in here. Okay. So if you look at this model, this is a mesh. You know, it's not really uh, uh, you know, the ideal mesh that I would like to see, yeah? but uh, I think for the demonstration purposes, uh, this, uh, this mesh is, is, is uh, good enough. Okay. So what I'm doing is that I have a fixed support. I just fix that at the bottom here, and I'm moving this guy, the top, uh, you know, body uh, down by uh, one millimeter. So I'm bringing it down one, one millimeter. Okay. Um, so if I look at uh, my uh, connections here, right? So what I have is I have a frictionless uh, contact. And everything else I'm using the default for the program control. I'm just letting ANSYS uh, control the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the contact the interaction here. Okay. So I go to my solution. And, uh, let's see. I'm, uh, I'm looking. Let me delete this guy here. I don't think I click. Uh, I'm not sure if it is going to give me any, any problems, but. Uh, uh, I, I'm uh, uh, looking at the, you know, deformation, looking at the st equivalent stresses. So let's just go and solve my problem here. <clears throat> so it's just solving. It takes a few, a few seconds to, to, to solve. It's, it's fairly, fairly quick. And um, so if I go to the solution information, I can, you know, scroll all the way down here and it says that I'm solving. 12 seconds in this case. And if I look at my deformation, it, you know, for the most part, I, you know, it uh, looks, looks okay, looks good. But if you zoom in, you see that uh, there is a little bit of a penetration here. Okay. And it's up to you to decide if uh, this penetration is, is good or, or not. And this is, uh, uh, by default, it uses a penalty uh, function a penalty method for uh, for this uh, uh, this context. So you know, in any, any penalty uh, uh, method, uh, there is always going to be a certain amount of uh, penetration. Okay. So going back to my contact uh, definition here, uh, I can see that uh, what ANSYS did was that uh, this is my contact body. Okay, so it is using the nodes in this uh, uh, surface here against my target, against the surfaces in here. Okay, so again, I'm using 
nodes here against faces in here. If you go back to the mesh, if you look at the mesh, okay, you will see that that is, for this problem here, it is really not a very good approach. Because if I'm looking at the nodes on this face, I'm looking at this node and this node here, right? Against, you know, this face here. So you can see that the contact will only be achieved when this node touches this guy somewhere in here, which means this node has already penetrated. Okay, so let, let, let's see, let, let's just uh, play a little bit uh, with this. Okay, so I'm, I'm using everything uh, uh, default by ANSYS. Uh, I'm using, this is my contact uh, face, uh, face or surface, and this in blue is my target uh, surface, okay? I can go and try to uh, flip the contact and target. So when I do that, uh, now I'm going to use the nodes on my contact surface against the faces on my target uh, uh, surface. Maybe it will help, maybe it, will not, it won't help. So let's try run and see what happens here. Okay. So again, it will take a few seconds to run. And then when we look at the deformation, you can see that it's, it's pretty much the same. I, I couldn't tell the difference, right? Uh, and, uh, and I think uh, the, 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 the reason is because uh, I'm using uh, the behavior, the, the promo control, which is auto uh, asymmetric. And ANSYS is, uh, is automatically trying to do the best it, it can to, 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 to define you know, who is uh, contact and who is target. Okay, and then I'm not exactly sure what it, what it is doing internally, but, uh, you know, it gave me a little bit penetration, you know, maybe this penetration is good enough for me. So now let's take a full control over, over this and let's make it uh, asymmetric, okay? And let's see, uh, and make sure that, uh, you know, we know who is uh, contact and who is target. So in this case, uh, here is a contact, so I'm looking at the nodes here against the, the, the surface faces on, on, on my target. Let's just uh, you know, have a, a little fun with this. Let's flip uh, the contact. Let's use the nodes in here against the, the, the faces here, okay? So if I'm using the nodes and I'm using the faces, okay, um, I would expect this guy here to come down until this node touches the face here. Let's see if uh, that's, that's what, what happens here. So let's solve this guy. Okay, and uh, the formation. And, uh, you know, not sure what, uh, you know, I was expecting this guy to come in contact in here, right? But he didn't, didn't, didn't do that. And as a matter of fact, it, it seemed, this is very similar to, to what we had before when we had asymmetric uh, behavior, right? But, but keep in mind, by default, ANSYS is using uh, the Gaussian points to detect that contact. So maybe there is a Gaussian point in here that is coming in contact with this, this surface here. Maybe that's, that's why it is uh, stopping there instead of coming all the way down. Please notice that, uh, you know, for the deformation, I'm using true scale for, for the uh, uh, deform shape, okay? So what we're seeing here is, is the actual deformation of uh, this body against uh, this body, okay? So as I said, maybe it is uh, uh, detecting the Gaussian point. The Gaussian point is what is coming into contact. So let's go in here and the de detection method, let's change it to, node, okay? And uh, let's rerun this guy. And let's see if uh, now the contact will happen at the node instead of at the uh, Gaussian point. Okay, 
So I'm going to do a throw deformation. Ooh, okay, ta-da. <laughs> the node now is uh, coming in contact exactly wherever I expected it to, to come. Okay, so you can see, you know, the, the different uh, uh, controls that, that, that you have uh, to, 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 to see, you know, who is it contacting, where it is contacting, and, uh, you know, what is, um, what you, how you want the, the, the contact behavior to be. Okay, so now let's go back here. And uh, I, I had, uh, you know, these uh, uh, contact and target, and let's now go and switch uh, the target and contact. Okay, so when we do the uh, target and contact, now let's go back here. Let's try to solve the, 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 the model here again. Look at the deformation. Okay, so you can see that uh, there is still a little bit of a uh, uh, penetration there, right? Uh, and and I would say probably this uh, this penetration is more because of uh, you know the, the penalty method that uh, we were using before, right? Um, if we uh, 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 go back here, um, there is a, another. Um, uh, you, you, you see the, the formulation that is, uh, uh, you know, it is, you have several different types of uh, uh, formulation available to you, okay? Um, the the program control that we use uh, augmented uh, Lagrange, which is basically a pure penalty method with an extra term there to, to make the, the solution less sensitive to the stiffness of uh, contact uh, stiffness, okay? But uh, there is another uh, formulation that uh, it can be used, which is the normal Lagrange. Okay? And the normal Lagrange, it adds a, a, an extra degree of freedom, which is the contact pressure. Okay? And then this contact pressure actually ensures that uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the penetration is uh, very, very minimal. Okay? So if I change that uh, to the normal uh, pressure, let's just uh, go back to the, the formula, everything else uh, back to it. Uh, to default, uh, I can go and try to solve this again. Okay. And uh, this uh, uh, normal uh, Lagrange uh, formulation, okay. this normal Lagrange formulation, uh, it, uh, you need to use a, a direct solver. So depending on, on the problem that uh, you have, it may, it may take longer to, to, to solve. In this case, because this is such a simple problem, I think uh, run times were you know, very, very equivalent. Okay. So by, do, by using the normal Lagrange, you can see that I was able to fully eliminate the, you know, the, the, the penetration. So you can, uh, you can use um, uh, you know, that uh, formulation if, uh, if you want as well. Okay. So I think, uh, you know, I, uh, I, uh, I touched on, on the different controls that, that you have, you know, the symmetric, the asymmetric. Uh, the symmetric is, is the most, uh, you know, uh, uh, straightforward uh, uh, setup for, for, for contact. Um, you know, there is always pros and cons, uh, the results in the interpretation. For these, uh, for a problem like this, uh, result in interpretation is very straightforward. So, you know, if you went with symmetric, asymmetric, uh, you know, you, you probably get the, the same, uh, uh, same uh, results as uh, result, the resulting plots, right? In terms of uh, contact results. Uh, asymmetric uh, will give you full control of uh, uh, what, what is happening there. If you, if you go with the auto asymmetric, and now you're letting ANSYS decide who is contact and, and who is, uh, uh, who is, uh, uh, target and then again uh, it, it can be a little confusing to, to look at the uh, look at results okay um, but as I said uh, you know asymmetric is a is a, is a best uh, uh, you know gives you the the, the the most control over what is happening in the, at that uh, contact interaction um, and then we also looked at the uh, you know uh, the formulation that uh, the control that you have over the formulation that uh, uh, 
uh, you want the ANSYS to, to use for, uh, uh, for, for, for the solver, okay? Um, the, you know, you, you can let the, the ANSYS uh, choose what formulation for the contact that you want, or you can, uh, you know, use a, you know, pure penalty, uh, you know, or even this uh, normal Lagrange, okay? The, and again, the normal Lagrange uh, adds an extra degree of freedom, which is the contact pressure to, to the solution, which, uh, which could, uh, you know, if you have a very large model, very complex uh, contact interactions, uh, it could uh, make uh, sort of run times, uh, uh, you know, a lot uh, longer, um, just because, uh, you know, you don't have access to the iterative solvers anymore. You, you have to use a direct solver. So I think this is pretty much what, um, what I had uh, to present today. Um, I see these, uh, there are some, uh, uh, yeah. So Casey, you're talking about refinement of, of, of the mesh is, is the answer. Yes, refinement of mesh, uh, I think you can say is, is uh, could always be a, 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 an answer. Uh, you know, uh, refining the, 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 the mesh, uh, you, you, you basically give more points uh, where uh, contact uh, could be happening. And, um, uh, but there's always a, a trade off, you know, how fine do you need to go with a mesh? You know, the, the, this model is, is very simple. I can just uh, refine the mesh. Uh, the run times instead of uh, 10 seconds uh, will be maybe two minutes. And, you know, that's perfectly acceptable for a problem model like this. But if you imagine that you, you, you have uh, models with uh, millions of degrees of freedom or so, uh, that might not be an option for you, okay? And uh, situations like that, I think it's very useful for you to understand, uh, you know, the engine behind the, 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 the contact algorithm analysis. Okay. Uh, I think that was the only answer or question that I saw in the, in the chat. Um, if uh, there are no more uh, questions, um, we have this uh, Kativ um, uh, virtual academy uh, every Thursday. The next uh, ANSYS uh, 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 session is going to be uh, the third uh, Thursday of February. I don't have the topic uh, yet. Uh, please uh, come back to, to our website in the next few days uh, to, to, to see the, the, the topic that, that we're, we're going to cover. Uh, but um, we uh, should have this, uh, uh, this um, uh, uh, webinar. Yeah out uh, in a, in a, on a YouTube uh, fairly soon. Uh, but if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out uh, to us. And, uh, you know, we'll be here to, uh, to help, uh, uh, help you as our, our customer. Okay.